there we are we are in south africa we got in yesterday and went out a little bit got dinner but this is our first real day in south africa we don't really plan anything for trips until we get there for the most part unless it's something that needs a reservation ahead of time or it's something big like safari so we plan those but for the rest of it we usually just like get here check into our hostel see what our hostel says we're trying to get an uber now to go to brunch the Chenin Blanc and it was only what like five dollars for the bottle I first ordered and I was like oh a glass of this please and they were like we don't sell by the glass and I was like well those prices are for the bottle and they were like yes so wine is crazy cheap here guys it's great that it was the Dutch who came in first and colonized and then the British came in and then the Dutch resented the British for coming in and colonizing. I didn't know how much the Dutch were opposed to the British. Mm -hmm. I thought they were both united. Yeah, I thought they were on the same though. side too. Mm. The irony of the situation. This is unjust and unchristian to subjugate the indigenous people, but they didn't care. So just a lot of cognitive dissonance. Mm -hmm. Reading the history books and Wikipedia. Mm. You're appreciating the wine pairing now. Maybe there's a sommelier mm. in you yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like reporting that camera crew disappears. <laughs> Fun fact is that neither Nathaniel or I really like hiking, but we do it for different reasons. Nathaniel, why do you hike? Because they told us there's a thing to do here. <laughs> and I hike because I like views, but I'm not really like a hiker. If you told me to hike without views, I'd be like, mm-mm, that's silly. Look what we have ahead of us. So rocky. <laughs> How will we ever get up there? Okay, we have kind of arrived. So now we have to decide whether we want to <laughs> go up to like the top top. The sign says use ladders, chains, and staples at own risk. Here's the ladder that they were talking about. Time to go up. They were not kidding. There was a recommended route and me and my infinite hubris, which is a common theme in my life. I decided to try the harder route, but now I'm at the top. Out of all the countries in the world, South Africa has the highest Gini coefficient, a measure of wealth and quality in a group. It is double that of South Korea's and 150% of the United States. Under the apartheid government, which was in power from 1948 to the early 1990s, millions of Cape Town's non-white residents were forced to move to townships after the government designated parts of Cape Town as whites-only areas in 1950. Living conditions in the townships range from formal brick-and-mortar houses to shacks built out of whatever materials are available. Electricity and 
running water are not guaranteed. The townships are seen by some as dangerous places full of gains and violence, of which there are some, as with anywhere, but the residents of townships like Kailicha, near Cape Town, see these townships as simply home. It is incredibly easy in Cape Town to stay in the wealthy, predominantly white neighborhoods, even though white residents comprise only 7.8% of the population. 80.9% of the population are black, and 8.8% of the population are colored, an official term used in South Africa for those of mixed race ancestry. It is jarring then to go to restaurants or neighborhoods with flipped demographics and witness the de facto segregation in some areas still. South Africa is extraordinarily beautiful, but apartheid casts a long shadow over the glimmering landscapes. We were just at lunch and it started raining and now there's like, this is a full rainbow. Full rainbow, whole arc. Morning. We are on our way to go snorkeling with seals. I read a little bit about it and in March and April apparently that is when the seal pups are learning how to swim so I'm really hoping that because it's March we'll be able to meet some seal pups. I think it'll be a really cute day. Daniel got hungry <laughs> and asked for a biscuit. So these are our outfits, really cute. These are our flippers, which we have to bring on board as well. And please ignore my eye, I have a sty. Sea safari. We're here. Hey, good afternoon everybody. Hey. Welcome. Okay, we're back. As you can see, it's done a number on my hair, but it was a really cool, but also really harrowing experience. I'm gonna definitely get out of this because I'm so cold. Their eyes are really big in our water. I feel like this is pretty accurate. One of them actually swam by me and opened its mouth. It's actually kind of scary. And there were seal pups just learning to swim and everything. We were given 40 minutes total to snorkel, but really probably 20 minutes in, I was like, I'm cold. My feet are really cold. My hands are really cold. safari and we're still going on safari mainly because people kept on telling us that safari was the best thing they'd ever done and they wanted to do it more blah 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 so we landed at the airport and then immediately went on safari but upon a friend's recommendation we have checked in at Inyati Game Lodge, which is in Sabi Sands, which is a private game reserve, which means that it is a crazy expensive. The price for one person per night is about 600 US dollars. I think the difference here in Sabi Sands is that you actually can go off road. So you can get closer to the animals as well. Whereas in Kruger National Park, you can't go off road. So already there's kind of a difference in the experience of safari and definitely in the experience of accommodations. This is our little lodge with this day bed. And then you enter. Is the bed which looks super comfy they put our suitcases here for us we also have this little private backyard oh and they even have a vanity i have been using like a mirror that's really tiny and really small and there's only one in our hostel bathroom so it's kind of shocking to be able to see my body in this way. This is the bathroom. They have a bathtub with some salt. I'm not even a bath person, but this sounds really nice. Indoor shower, his and her sink. They also showed us that there is, oh no, I can't do it. Can I do it now? Oh, 
there's this outside shower. So if you kind of want this like outside shower with nature experience, you can get it here. Generally, I am always pretty happy that I left Big Law to write this book and kind of just pursue a life that's a bit less on a blueprint path. But in moments like these where I get to see these places, these are the times where I'm like, man, should I go back? I guess we'll see. Okay, let's just go on a tour of the grounds. This is the stairway to the main lodge where we had lunch just now. This is the reception area where you can kind of sit and look out there, look onto kind of that like grassy area. Okay, and here is the pool area. The weird thing about safari is that some of our guides in Cape Town, they said that they couldn't even go on safari because safari is a relatively expensive activity. So it was really interesting to me that for even people who live in the country, going on safari is kind of a luxury. It's not something that everyone can do. For those who live in the city, artists began painting the animals on murals, etc., so that the residents of the city could actually see the animals on safari. The next thing we have is at 3.30 before our 4 p.m. drive. Oh my god, it's so hot. We will be having tea. I kind of changed my outfit, but I don't know. I feel like I'm not like well-dressed enough for this place, period. <laughs> experience kind of like being in daycare but there's like different times all right it's snack time everybody gathering come get your snack and then it's like we're all gonna go do the activity now here's us eating our snack before mm -hmm. we do our activity now we're just going across the river like it's a normal thing to do ah! a.m. and they just knocked on our door telling us it was five. We gotta get ready for morning safari. How are you feeling Nate? Definitely tired. <laughs> uh, excited but glad we're doing this one time. Yeah but only one time. Mm. Sometimes oh, bugs will just fall on you, so I'm using this blanket right now as spider and bug protection. No. I really hate spiders and bugs. No, I come in peace. This feta cheese is like the best feta cheese on earth. I don't know how they make it. I don't know where they got it from, but it is just the best feta cheese I've ever had. The 
apartheid museum right now and I thought this was really cool. They <laughs> randomly classify tickets as either whites or non-whites and then you have to use different entrances. So to really give us an experience of uh, segregation. Here we are and of course Nathaniel stuck me with the non-whites ticket. All right, here we go. Apartheid Museum, but we spent like four hours there. There was a lot of reading. Yeah, it was really great though. Joburg. We're in the Santon neighborhood of Joburg. Whenever we get into an Uber, the Uber driver, if we were going to Soweto, they would actually look at their phone and then be like, Soweto, huh? Are you sure? Are you sure? And we'd have to confirm, yes, we are going to Soweto. Whereas we just called an Uber to come here to Santon and they looked at where we were staying and they were like, Santon, nice. It's been this interesting experience of seeing like how even our Uber drivers interpret these various neighborhoods of Joburg. I'm gonna take a nap and then we're gonna go get dinner and then try one night of Joburg clubbing. Okay, so why was last night so weird? We went to what's supposed to be like one of the hottest clubs in town that's only a Friday night club on a Friday night. There's like this thing in Joburg where clubs are like Friday night clubs or Saturday night clubs. They usually don't open both nights. It was incredibly empty. Everywhere we went over the past several days has been just completely empty. There was still some dancing and it was fun to bop around. One of the funny things about the club is it's supposed to be like one of the safest clubs. I don't know exactly what that means, but they also censored the music. So it was like morally safe or something. It was just physically safe. all around. Yeah, safe all around. You can hear like they're about to say a curse word in a song and all of a sudden the music like goes to zero and then turns it back up again. <laughs> Family safe. Mm. So far, like, we have not hacked Joburg nightlife, and I guess we won't because we are flying back tonight. <laughs> South Africa has officially influenced me. I am shopping for Birkenstocks. I never thought the day would come. Feels good. Can I try the other? Sure. Yeah, the left, so I can try it too. Are they? Oh. Uh, I used to think they were so ugly, but now I kind of, I kind of think they're cute. 